my next one is about how SETI at home, you know, the, the big uh, collaborative... Search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Yes. Indeed. Mm, that Tell is me more. Fun. Tell me more, scientists. They're looking for aliens. Yes, they are. Tell me more. But oh, your... they have decided, instead of searching for biological aliens, they should now look for artificial intelligence. My, my, DJ. Yes, I know. Actually, this is a rather a big thing. Uh, the, yeah, the BBC News saying August 22nd that... Yeah, the, uh, SETI is saying that they are now actually focusing a lot on the ideas of searching for, like, a computer out there rather than, you know, biological life forms and sense. stuff. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he also says that artificial intelligent alien life form will be likely to migrate to places where there is both matter and energy. The only things he says would be of interest to machines would be plentiful in supply. This means the SETI hunt may need to focus its attentions near hot, young stars or even near the center of galaxies. Which... Black holes. Yeah, the they, giant they, black hole in the center of every galaxy. They could be giant computers, you never know. Yeah, well, that's true. It, again, you've got the yeah, problem yeah, of yeah, sending out true. information, but yeah. But they're tense. You've got a lot of information stuff around there, because as we've spoken before, that the limit happens here when we're talking... Well, this is as we'll go into singular topic in a bit, but yeah. as what the limit happens is the light speed travel. Yeah, Pro provided that is the actual... Well, provided that is, like, a, that's a big... The assumption. definitive, you know, that's yeah. as fast as things can travel. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, information. I, I just think it's very uh, very interesting that they are that's actually... Very, yeah, <laughs> actually well, looking now Well, I don't know why they for... hadn't thought of that before. Like, hmm. I'm guessing they're, they're probably just looking at our own civilization now and saying, shit, you yeah. know... In our entire biological civilization, technology is just going so well, fast I, I right now they, that it's just... A I mean, bleak. realistically speaking, I always were looking for, like, you know, technological stuff like radio signals and all that coming from it. But now just, it's very much obvious that that's going to be the... That, that artificial life forms are going to be the life form. It's not going to be us. Yeah. Well, I mean, we sent out our first artificial life form back in the... 60s or mm. 70s, didn't we? Spot yeah, it. but we had uh, impressions of ourselves on it. Lovely yeah. record. Well, see, that's what, like, even that, um, that's, it was, it was Sputnik, yeah? The first human... Well, Sputnik was the one the furthest, beeping. The furthest that's one that was sent Voyager, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, we could just send out the intelligent algorithms to that in the future. Yeah. Say, like, 50 years from now, we send well, out... Well, its computational power is negligible, to say the least. <laughs> yeah. Let's make but, it really efficient. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, just the idea that we're, we're sending out, like, even now, we're sending out artificial intelligence hmm. I mean that's the Mars it. rover that's artificial intelligence like yes yeah. it's a robot we control it but there is a lot of artificial it intelligence it is artificial intelligence yeah anyway well this is a, kind of moves us on to the singularity topic hey? yeah. yeah what are you going to call it I don't know what we should call it <laughs> um, let's spreading just, of intelligence through the universe let's just before. say that the, uh, the motivations of artificial intelligence when okay. yeah when w what we'll talk about, I think, is uh, when the whole solar system, or at least the immediate vicinity, are all computer chips and are all artificial intelligence. Let's extrapolate to that point. Kurzweil speaks about it, that you send nano robots out to, like, say, Jupiter, out to Io, out to every yeah. planet around, every bit of matter, and you convert it into computer chips. But why? Well, I'll get to that. <laughs> okay. And then you could even move them around in a Dyson sphere or a Dyson ring type configuration around the sun. Mm -hmm. And you do that to have more computational power. And, and to uh, access energy. And to access energy to go through. Which, um, uh, we had a video response by a guy named G. Jeremy, who spoke a lot about this. His name's Jeremy. Yeah, it was YouTube. <laughs> YouTube uh, username yeah. is G. Jeremy. But yeah, he spoke about this. I tried to, thought it would be kind of cool. We'll, we'll address some of his other points like later on. But yeah. yeah. At this point now, I think, yeah, it's kind well, of cool. Should, to... I'll, I'll splice in some of his questions somehow. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks for the, the question, dude. Yeah, dude, epic. Slash point of view or whatever. That was yes. really cool. Yeah, that was awesome. So, <laughs> I'm going to ask you this first question. What do you think the motivation would be for planetary, yeah, extra solar system intelligence? Okay. Well, I think, okay, once we can actually turn, okay, the entire Earth into a... Let's say the whole solar system. Okay, well... <laughs> Okay, well, you, I think your limiting factors are um, energy. So if if this intelligence, if we continue to grow like the internet and whatever becomes of that AI, mm -hmm. whatever, it's continually going to be demanding more and more energy, mm -hmm. which you obviously have to go off planet to get. So that's mm -hmm. your first thing, and obviously stars is probably the first thing it'll go for. Yeah. Um, and then it's the idea of like okay, turning every single piece of matter, so all of Earth 
planets into making re- it intelligent. Yeah, using nanotech to actually configure it into an intelligent sort of computer. Because at the moment it's dumb matter. Like a rock is like the matter's all there. It can be computed on, but it's all arranged in the atoms are arranged in weird positions. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the yeah. atoms aren't arranged intelligently. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea is the nanotech would go through and just arrange everything into a computer. Mm-hmm. To compute what we don't know. No. I don't think you could I, possibly... I think the only thing we know. can say is that they'll want to make more computation from it. Mm. We'll see why, why... We should probably try and answer why they're computing. What's the point? <laughs> well, that's why you have right now. Why do we want to make faster like, computers? Actually, I just recently uh, rewatched The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's a good movie. First time I watched it... Good I show, good book. <laughs> yeah, first time I watched it, I didn't actually... Because I probably wasn't into all this singularity type stuff before then. I'd never realized that the whole meaning to life thing where she says, uh, the computer says, you know, we'll actually build Earth as a computer to actually work out the meaning for life and life will be integrated into its cell. Yeah. So Earth is a computer, which is very, very true. Very much so. I mean, now, the ad- yeah. atoms right now, we're kind of computing. Hmm. I mean, we're just made of atoms. Everything else around us is just made well, of atoms. Yeah, well, we're computing just... just in a very primitive form. Yeah, slowly and in a self-directed manner. Hmm. Not manner. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, completely derailed. What were we talking about? No, okay. Well, uh, <laughs> you were saying that uh, I, I guess it's the hunt for more computational yeah, power. Yeah, but why? Why? What are we? What's a computing? Why is it computing? Well, I, I, I don't really know. I don't think anyone can know. I mean, it's the same way as Moore's law now. Why do we want faster computers and stuff? That I mean, uh, I, I know many people, especially from older generation, not really our generation too much, but uh, older yeah. generation, saying, "Why do you need a faster computer?" And even now with the, in Australia with the hung parliament, a lot of people are saying, why do you need a gigabits broadband? And even, even ourselves can't yeah. really actually answer and say, oh, it's going to provide this, 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 and we this. Just, we can't give specific yeah, reasons. We just know it'll be very integral mm. to the future. But we'll see, I, yeah. And so but I guess... It's difficult to explain. It is very difficult to explain. And I mean, I mean, we're talking like on extra solar system type ways here that yeah. you know, we're talking of magnitudes of intelligence we can't begin to fathom. Yeah. Uh, why would that need even more? And I, I think that trend is going to continue for many, many thousands of years, if yeah. not millions. We should also um, answer one of, I think one of Jeremy's points was... A lot more gets done when a lot more people are working on the problem. So, or a lot more resources are working on a specific problem. So if, if we had a, like a billion square miles of computer, of computers, all working to achieve a goal, that would probably lead up to a singularity beyond which we couldn't comprehend. And it doesn't have to be on the planet because the planet probably doesn't have a billion square miles. We could use the resources of Jupiter or or the silicon on the moon or... What other reasons, what other things do you think uh, those artificial intelligences that have already taken over their solar system mm. would go for. Like, I mean, energy, obviously a big one, a definite. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably the probably only the major really. one. And, well, and then matter as well. Like, you're looking for matter to actually convert yeah. that into it again. And then it becomes, well, an, an issue I'd like to discuss with you, we haven't actually spoken about this, what happens when, let's say, one meets another? They merge. You don't think any wars or anything? No, it's not... War, war is inefficient. War is a... I think war is a human thing. All right. I think war is a biological thing fought over... Well, I guess... It's still... But this, Actually, yeah. If it's... If it's, if it's fight over... If it, it would be like a fight over energy and resources, maybe. Yeah. If but it's it's, it's not even that. I think it's a fight over the way of operating. It'll be a fight on the meme level, on the fight of the... What way is like more efficient or... Yeah. What, what way is the best way of well, thinking and ordering? I think it might also be purpose-based because this... Um, I was going to just mention this... Um, Linking back to Stephen Wolfram's talk about, you know, what is intelligence? Yeah. This, uh, this artificial intelligence that we seek is human intelligence. Yeah, and, and, and humans and humans have a specific purpose. We don't even know what it is, but no. they have a specific purpose. Um, he was saying that it'll be. Mm. It's very difficult to find intelligence in the universe because we don't know what we're looking for. What is mm. intelligence? We can't define it. And even if we come across it, it'll have a completely different purpose to what we have. Mm. Like, say, our AI might be, you know, after energy, but it might be computing for a particular purpose, whereas another AI might be computing for a different purpose. That's where they may clash, like... Mm. Um, well, say, I, this is where I, I, I guess I, I disagree a little bit, that I think 
Or I hate it. It's getting into the metaphysical aspect, which is it's. We're Don't already you. broaching it. We're very broaching it. Don't go metaphysical. No, no. But what what I mean is like the you know the purpose for all of this here that I think what we've actually found through biological evolution and definitely towards computer evolution is the purpose for most things is to just increase their computational power. Is to actually just increase that going again and again and again. I think Good that. Goals, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, because more Hierarchy computational power evolution. actually leads to, yeah, more more stuff. And I think that's going to be the, well, the big thing. I think that's going to yeah. always be it, where it comes to the idea of wars and stuff, or like one computational intelligence meeting another. And, um, yeah. So I, don't, I don't think they, they wouldn't war, they'd negotiate. Yeah, well, I, I think it'll, yeah, I don't, I don't think it'll be war. There's no yeah. point, like, no point. You wouldn't it. destruct the other thing, yeah. No. I think they'd merge. They'd like pretty much. They'd take the best of both of them and then just. Merge. They'd probably like a attack a lot until it balanced out the same way that it kind of happens now in biological forms. Yeah, see, I, mean? I don't think they. I don't think they would battle. Like you see it so often well, now. Well, no, there'd, there'd definitely be a little bit of like conflict as they first meet, but that'd be so brief. Well, see, see, I think it it, it comes down to if their purposes are aligned. Like, I'm just thinking right now, the, the Netflix prize uh, reminded me, um, there were different teams working on trying to get to this particular goal with the Netflix prize, and it was only by two teams actually combining together into one okay, that they right. could overcome that goal. But that yeah. was both, they were both after the same purpose um, with yeah. competition, but they found by like, joining, they could, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, think it's, I think it's after a while that that would happen. That you, you get one or two, like, actually meeting together and... Whatever the, the more dominant memes are, I guess they're probably another word for a dominant uh, computational patterns and mm. stuff would end up taking over. But maybe after a brief war and stuff, but what we're talking on like a, a level we kind of like begin to comprehend, like we're time talking galaxy-wise yeah. and stuff. Well, that's what we were talking about just previously, how yeah. how our time scale is so warped. Like, Well, this is where it becomes fun. Like, yeah, our, our, li our life um, expectancy of what, 80 years now, it used to be like 25 mm. back in the you know, mm. medieval days and just how people still think that, you know, life is, you know, only given purpose if you die, but it yeah. actually like stars and planets and all these like artificial intelligences obviously work on a scale of millions of years. Yeah. And like, then there is, the there is no, there is no death. And then your perspectives change. Like, even your purpose will change your, oh, very much your reason for computing, what you're computing for, where you go. It'll, change because of that yeah it's, it's going to be great that's going to be the playground of it there and i haven't actually thought too much about like i've thought a lot about like once the solar system is flooded with intelligence yeah uh then yeah, i see it like you know wars around the gap well not wars like you know things around the galaxy trying to make the galaxy intelligent when you start talking uh galactic stuff then i think you've actually got the speed of light as too much of a limiting factor but yeah, that's that's, not, that's the thing we need to mention. Like, okay, if if this has happened, or if if, if this is where we a, a possibility of where we may be going, mm. why haven't we seen it anywhere else? Yeah, well, see, I, again, it could be we don't know what we're looking for. That, or yeah, what you just mentioned there, the speed of light. The speed of light could be the limiting factor. In which case, it takes like you know, yeah, <laughs> hundreds ridiculous. of thousands of years just to get across our galaxy, and there's yeah. hundreds of or oh, hundred billion. Galaxies, galaxies yeah. that we know of. Yeah, well, <laughs> see, that's, that's where I really liked it. I mean, yes, SETI's obviously going there. Their big things are that I mean, intelligent matter hunts for energy, it hunts for matter, mm -hmm. and I think the other thing that they actually really need to think about is the speed of light. I think that's going to be the other limiting factor here. Yeah. I mean, whatever our ideas with this are, are so limited, so <laughs> basic at the moment, but I mean, we still can at least establish some rough idea. And yeah, well, anyway, that, that's what I want to add into the mix. I think, yeah, the speed of light. Yeah. But future generations and alien species that come across this video, please treat, treat us kindly. Like, <laughs> we're, we're just primitive, you know, meat. We don't know much. The meat's talking. We're guessing. We're guessing. It's very odd. I mean, sentient meat. Sentient meat. Fear us. Google that. There's a, apparently, there's a good thing about that. Oh, you? it's a great story. Oh, it's a fantastic oh, yeah, story. Stuck, yeah. The meat's talking. What? <laughs> the meat is talking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's good fun. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed, I, I think that's pretty good actually. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, we been. Some little stuff in there. Yeah. Awesome. Sweet. Oh, this cool. has been a high forty-five for another week. I'm Tristan Graves. I'm Nathan Waters. Catch you next time.